No, I'm just looking around and make sure I have a Thank you. I got a lot of swag when I was away. Yeah, awesome. I yes, they were nice. Swag is fun. Yes, it was fun. Because I told them when I, when I was there, so I mean, we, we didn't get anything. <laughs> I was like, I got a t shirt, you know. I got all these Lululemon. Okay, I'm ready. I didn't even okay. know about Lululemon until. Uh, let's see. Do you want to take this? 604. We don't need to do that anymore. We don't even have to say the time. Mm -hmm. All right. Oh, it helps me out, right? <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'll um, I'll kind of try and give Rich kind of what we're. Thank you for joining us, Rich. Um, we might bombard you with some questions with, and maybe kind of talk to you about what we are trying to do as a group. Which, and feel free anyone to interrupt if I'm not saying Should this we correctly. Rich, please. it's like we know who Rich is. Okay. <laughs> These are new, one of our newest members of our committee. David Jowsko. Yes. Sorry. <coughs> principal, principal of the school this year, new. Um, so what we're trying, what we're what we're trying to do is is to expand our group, um, and and not necessarily expand our work tasks, but um, to really involve more community with with rec and offering programs and you know we're kind of short on on facilities so um, you know I think what what we as a group are kind of looking for is access you know more access to Rollinsford to use as kind of a, that community building and and you may or may not know the answers to the questions but you know We've talked obviously through the basketball program that you know we're limited on time because of having somebody there, and um, you know I guess what we're kind of wondering is can we somehow get to use the building for community purpose when somebody might not uh, you know, <coughs> or a staff member might not be there, and you know I think ultimately we had a conversation with the Elliot Rec person and. Um, she, uh, you know, they, they kind of freely move in and out of that building, but they have a rec director. So, you know, I think part of our, our problem has been that, you know, we don't have that set rec director to be like, here, you can run this and through our building. And, and they have a room, right? They have an area. Yeah, and, and they, they have there. a space inside the elementary school, which is pretty so, nice, uh -huh. right? Um, so that makes it easier for them as well. But, um, you know, I was even just kind of brainstorming because I know Celia at one point in time was wondering about, you know, a birthday party. And, um, you know, I was thinking, wow, that would be a great, like, generator of funds for the rec department to oversee that, you know? Um, I don't know if that's where we want to go, but just as far as like you know weekend basketball or you know at Elliott they have they have a pickleball league now adult pickleball league on Sunday and you know these are all the kind of things that we're hoping maybe to to get moving um, but we definitely need need your help and and I don't I don't know where the kind of the rules of the building came from and maybe you know that, they know. predate him they do. by many years. Yeah. And I actually spoke to the previous chair, the school board last night, who comes to work at the library on Monday night, and she said that, I said something about, um, I was meeting at the library for a subcommittee for something else, and they're like, oh, well, you know, the school should be open for resources like this. So she said the, the school board may be looking. Because even, and I was thinking too, they're offering yoga on Thursday nights down at the library in that tiny space. I mean, you know, would the Rollinsford Grade School be able to serve that? I mean, so, so I don't, I don't know if you have any answers, but I think this is kind of where the dialogue needs to start. In that, you know, this is what we're hoping to do, and I don't know if, if, you know, 
that's coming from somebody above you, or is this just how it's always been? And if it's how it's always been, how can we change it? <laughs> well, it would be a policy, <laughs> and then you change a policy for the school board. Is it a policy? I mean, is it a policy that there has to be a maintenance person there? There is a policy that isn't there. I would, I think, I believe there's a policy that says something about a school employee and and the manage, like the renting it out or the you know the use by outside groups. I believe there is a policy about that, so I think it would be important to know what the policy says, and then how you feel about the policy and what problems you see in changing it, or why it should stay the same, or whatnot, and then probably the select board talking to the school board about... I totally hijacked your answer, I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> I, I totally acknowledge that question was directed to you, I, I apologize, but you know, I, I just wanted to take you off the hook a little bit rather than put you on the spot because I don't think you really have probably a whole lot of control over this yourself. Well, I wasn't expecting to have a discussion about this, but I can, <laughs> I can speak to it fairly easily. Um, it's policy KF. Off the top of his head, that's impressive. KF. It's not off the top of my head. Oh, okay. <laughs> because the first thing on my item to talk to you about is um, to make sure that this committee fills out the facility use request form to use the facility during the summer. And my guess is that's never happened before. I bet that's never mm -hmm. happened before. We do do it now for our um, town Saturday meetings, yeah. our budget meetings. Yeah. And Stuff like that. We do yeah. do that. And Kelly's done it for rec basketball, and whenever there's been a change, we've been able to just do do it via email. So the policy years ago, because I've been a rec director, I've been an athletic director in a middle school. Um, years ago, it was everybody in town had a key. And my guess is that was the truth here, too. Um, yeah. People came and went. Um, keys were never collected. So years later, somebody would come to the school with a key, and yeah. I never turned this in when I stopped coaching. Right. Everything was just, it was compatible. And then people started suing the school districts across the country. Um, school districts were being held liable for um, injuries, you know, things that happen at school, thefts were happening because the school was wide open to whomever. Um, so school districts started putting into policy, you know, how they could use the building. Um, I've been in a couple of situations where the building is closed off except for the entrance and the gym. Yeah. So, and we had a rec director in that building. So on the weekends, they did rec basketball all day Saturday, part of the day Sunday. They also do um, baseball on Sunday afternoons. Uh, but the rec director or the person in charge of that program was always there. So the policy said a you know, custodian or employee will be on site at all times. Um, but in their policy, I think there was a waiver that the board could make if they felt comfortable with the group coming in that there was going to be appropriate supervision. Um, our policy is pretty similar. It says that you know you thou shall have you know an employee in the building, um, and I think a lot of that. My feeling as one of the people that has to oversee the safety of the building and the upkeep and everything is. It helps to protect the building. I mean, it's something as simple as a kid going to the bathroom and flushing the toilet, and all of a sudden you get a flood. You know, you don't expect a recreation basketball coach to handle that situation. That's not their responsibility, and that's not why they're there. But it can't be left alone on, you know, Saturday morning when school doesn't go back in for 48 hours. Um, I think if you have a person on site. A dedicated, always the same person, like a rec director. Yeah, it's harder if it's 
this coach this night, this coach this night, this coach that night, it, that it's a lot harder. And I know you guys were pretty consistent with the same folks. Yep. Um, I can't speak for the board. I, I don't know. I know they want our building to be, you know, used by the community, and I completely agree with that. Um, I'm bound by the policy. If they set policy, and I'm supposed to carry it out. I have a little bit of leeway. You know, people are supposed to give me two weeks' notice before using it. You know, but you know, you make changes on the fly, and you know, that's easy enough to do. Um, and if it's available, you know, why, why, why do you turn somebody down just because they gave you a week notice instead of two weeks you know, or two days' notice? You know, that's happened a couple of times. If if it's available and we can make it work. I think I think most of like some of the stuff that we want to do is is you know weekend stuff, and so I guess that's kind of how how can we make that <clears throat> happen with a committee with not a set person, you know? I think it's about like the three year goal or or the five year goal and getting the fund you want. Get that person in place. Yeah, I, I, you know, it's not that it can't happen. I think right. you know we, we've got a hurdle, but if we can get even a part-time nine-month person who's maybe like full-time in the summer, but goes to part-time, you know, from March through November, or I don't know what, but yeah. supported by fees mm -hmm. and probably some tax dollars at first or something, but then you have a regular person. And a regular contact, one responsible party. Right. But we could probably get there. But is, is there paid staff from the school? Um, maintenance staff? They do have paid maintenance staff. Yeah. Okay, they do. If so the if staff is on site, like the evenings that they used, mm -hmm. um, staff is already on site, staff is already working, so there's no cost to an outside group because we already have staff there. Mm -hmm. If it's a weekend, Right. Then there's a fee schedule in the policy. Okay. Um, I can't remember specifically. Well, I know in the past, even if PTO was doing something on a Saturday, PTO paid <coughs> the custodian to be in the building. It was just assumed we had to have PTO. We had to have a custodian there. And I know from looking at it myself, it's like nonprofits. Like the PTO or the rec committee would be different than me personally yeah. doing it on the fee schedule. I don't know the exact numbers. It's a tiered schedule based on what the group is. Yeah. But knowing that, I think it doesn't mean that you can't have a Saturday event. You just are uh, budgeting, well, you're budgeting for it and you may be charging for it to compensate for whatever the fee is. Right. But it doesn't mean it can't happen. Well, right. the second part is. You know, there have been a couple of requests that I put out to staff. And oh, staff must be willing to be there on a Saturday. Yeah. We don't. We have one full-time custodian, and we have our full-time maintenance person. The full-time custodian works during the week, and anything extra is overtime. And you know, we can't require him, you know, to come in and work overtime. Okay, so here's another thing, and this is kind of a stretch, and I don't know if you can answer this, but the town janitor has been filling in for your facilities person occasionally when he's out. He's one of our subs. Yeah. yeah, so would he be qualified to be, if he's available and willing, a, a Saturday on staff person? Yeah. yeah, because he's a paid employee for us, even though he's a sub. He's there. And quite enough. frankly, in my opinion, that's better than me being there because, like you said, if the toilet starts ever flowing, yeah. I'll just call <laughs> somebody about that? Yeah. I have yeah. no clue. And if it's something more, right. he's on the phone with Dick. Right. Getting talked through it. But he also knows a little bit about how to work yeah. and how the lights work. Yeah. yeah, and it's helpful as a group to have that because that building is not user friendly in that way. Mm -hmm. right. <laughs> yeah. So when I put it out by email, he doesn't get those requests because he's not 
Regular. A regular employee, he's a substitute employee, so he, he wouldn't get that, I don't think. I know he gets the alert messages. But if Tom didn't send the email for us, he would get But, yeah, that's an option that would be. So it sounds easy. like it's a possibility, but it's more of a planning issue. we got a plan to <coughs> get there, yeah. So it's not on the fly. But it sounds like, you know, you could do, as long as you can get the staffing, you know, staffing to my mind, having staffing that's willing to work is the bigger hurdle. And then, you know, under that is, how are you going to pay for that? Um, right. But to my <laughs> mind, this could be, like, thinking about this now is important for next year's budgeting. Right. Because you're going to have to budget for those fees, even though you may be taking in fees to compensate for it. So, you know, what do you want to use? Like, you know, for example, if you're going to have an adult volleyball league, is that going to be a four-week thing, or is that going to be an eight-week thing? Because you have to know how many days you're paying the school for, right. and how many, you know, what you're going to charge in fees to make up for that, or what you're budgeting. The good thing is that it's a nonprofit group. So not only part of the tier is you have to pay the employee an hourly rate, and then there's a rental fee depending on the space. But because you're a <coughs> nonprofit group, there is no fee for the space. So that helps financially. Um, I would suggest that you get on a board agenda, <coughs> but I can tell you honestly what I would recommend if they ask me and I, what the superintendent would recommend because you know I've seen him ask that question before too. And if it's can we use the facility without someone here, we would both recommend to the board that they don't go against their policy. Because then if something happens and they've gone against their own policy, they're even more liable. Mm -hmm. I've seen boards do it. Mm -hmm. I've seen injuries happen mm -hmm. in a gym. Ambulances come. Though we are now supplying you with a certificate, even though we both have Primex, we are now supplying you with a certificate of insurance for basketball and yep. or rec, yep. so that at least you know you're covered with or we're covered with that stuff. Yeah. Um, I would also tell this group. But if you want to talk to that board, you should go through the select board first. If you want to talk to the school board, that's what you're saying, to talk to the select board first. And just make sure they know what you're up to. <clears throat> Which I can relate to them on your behalf. I just, you know, um, it's important to keep them in the loop because they're like the same, at the same level as the school board. So, you know. I just feel, um, and you know, this might just be coming out, but and correct me, you guys are, we're all townspeople here that, you know, I, I think we feel like the school is just so closed up and shut off, you know, and, and there just needs to be a, a better cooperation between, you know, people in town and to have that facility because there is nothing else, you know. Well, I so, think, it, and a lot of that came about with all of the issues in society, with shootings. I mean, right. Jen was there, how many years ago, 10? In the era of everybody had a key. Right. Yeah. That, um, you know, that whole thing was, doors weren't locked. Right, right. You know, and yet we can't do that anymore. Right. Even if we wanted to, we're not allowed to do that, right? Right. You know, so it's, it's just such a different... Right. So some, I just feel like... Just, and, and I get that, so we need to find some place in the middle. <laughs> so I just need to agree that it, it's something that we, both parties want to do, however many parties are involved. Right. Just how do we do it now? Right. Like understanding that there's, you can't give out keys, you have to fill out forms. And, and I can tell you how Elliot runs it, just to get it. So they have three full-time rec people, and they all have a key to the, the school, and they have one key that they hand out to whoever's running the program. 
So, which is not necessarily one of the full-time rent people, but they have right. other people. Right. So it might be like, say it was with us, with you know um, Ryan coaching basketball. Like he would have a key for basketball season, and then it would be the responsibility of the rec person to then collect his key after basketball was over, if we were going to allowed to do that. But you know. My question is, is the school board in their budget has intramurals. Would we, as a committee, be considered, could we help out with intramurals and maybe make that crossover where we're doing sports with the school and opening it up? And kids are doing sports, they're talking about it. Maybe but that, bring more but that's after school anyway. It doesn't kind of really, I mean, there's always somebody there after school, so I don't think that really even. But I'm saying like if we have coaches for something besides basketball and we're doing intramurals, right. they have a budget in the school board. Right. And maybe if the kids are doing it, it might get the parents involved and more of the community involved in bringing them into the school. Well, it's so gone out for years to have more parents. If we get anybody who will coach. And yeah. Kelly and I tried that in the fall. Yeah. We posted. I posted internally. I posted to parents. It's a hard time. Not one person. Yeah. I had one staff member mm -hmm. that I went to who was looking, you know, for a part time gig and I said, you know, we have intramurals. It means more work, but you know, you get a small stipend and if you're looking for something a little extra to do, but it just it fell through because of time and you know, other commitments. So Is it just sports that we have um, a budget for? Is it sports and Sport or are there other sort of intramurals that are considered? You guys or uh, the, uh, school? Uh, the school? The school, it's, it's titled intramurals. Um, she was looking to do an art club. Yeah. And why not? I'm just thinking computer clubs or. Yeah. Well, they, they have, have one of those. those. We do have a STEM yeah. club. Yeah. Yeah. Right. That's done through um, our technology. And that's volunteer, that's right? Volunteer. Yeah, he, he volunteers for that. And then the play ran through our yeah, is right. that correct? Yeah. 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 So that was a grant. So yeah. Okay, so let me get really wild about this, which would not be like anytime soon. But if there's a stipend out there, nobody's willing to do that. Could that stipend go toward a currently non existent town position that would run that? Like, could, could a rec director or, like, you know... It's a very small site. Well, well, okay, but, you know, it might but it's help... Something. But it's something. <laughs> fair enough. But it might help offset the cost here of trying to get some kind of consistent rec programming off the ground. It's um, part of the staff's master agreement. So, so it has to be staff? No, it has to be offered to them first. Okay. And if nobody steps up or if there's additional money left over, then it can be used by somebody outside of the master agreement. Which means the funding will be consist inconsistent every year. Correct. And it's only a pool of $2,100, I think, for the whole year. But that's okay. Like, if I mean, that could be enough, maybe to do like pick up softball. Maybe it's not like three sports seasons, but maybe it starts with yeah. one. And it can be enough to start getting some employee. And, and you're still going to need a lot of volunteers to help with that, because one person can't do the whole thing. Mm -hmm. But it might help offset. I have to double check on that to make sure what I'm saying is correct. Because um. I wonder if we could do that if that, like, you know, that might have been an incentive for somebody to pick that up if, you know, in the fall when we did that, like maybe somebody would have done it for a stipend, I don't know. Because yeah. we did, we were just asking for volunteers. <laughs> yeah, I mean, being new, I was like, absolutely, the more activities for kids mm -hmm. after school, the less trouble they get into, the less mm -hmm. spring time they're doing. Mm -hmm. and, you know, it's healthy, but I'd have to double check on whether that stipend can be paid to somebody not employed by the school. Okay, 
you got an action on the bench. Not the first weeks. one of the day. Because <laughs> <laughs> even then, too, I wonder, you know, if we wanted to try four, like, four intramural sports for the year, you know, we could break that down to 500 a sport or something, or an art, you know, 500 for an art club, or 500 for basketball, or 500 for... Well, there's also language about how much each intramural is an eight-hour block, and the stipend is a certain amount of dollars per oh, hour. So it's broken down. So then. it's actually broken right down. Huh? Specific. Possibly with some planning, if the select board and school board worked together and found some kind of common ground, then they could completely rethink the idea. And does it have to be? You said it's part of the master plan, and um, you're going to look into the possibility of somebody from outside, but could it be a sub, like you said, the sub, the custodian who subs from the town could fill in at the school? If it's so a parent who subs at the school, could they step up and be part of the program? Do you know? They're probably, they it was a probably, a, probably a volunteer. The, the last person who did the intramural sports was a parent. She did not sub in the building. I don't know that she got paid. I don't know anything about That's, that. Yeah. But no. she, I'll tell you that right now. Yeah. She, yeah. I have no idea. Um, volunteer. I don't know how that works. Well, because if it has to be an employee to get paid, but a parent is still motivated to make it happen and isn't motivated by the stipend, then... I think what Kelly and I talked about in the fall was if we couldn't find somebody, but she had parents saying, hey, we want to do this, then I think we talked about would the rec committee sponsor the activity because then you've got the liability insurance right. you just do a facility request and it would be a volunteer activity similar to rec basketball. It would just be a recreation activity. So there's always that It could be just an expansion of the rec department mm -hmm. as the rec department grows and it doesn't yeah. necessarily have to do anything with the school. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. I think it's about, you know, further conversation and having a multi-year plan because I think it's going to be something that evolves over time. But, you know, but things to keep in mind for budgeting for next year. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. All right. So, I have to leave by yeah. 7 at the very latest. <laughs> um, I came to talk about the summer program. No. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't know you had an interest. That's why I took them because that's what I thought. <laughs> All right. That, that's why okay. I asked the comment <laughs> I know you've already advertised. Yeah. Um, I just want you know you to know what's available, what's not available. Um, I have questions. I'm sure you do too. Um, so the first one is, can somebody fill out the form? <laughs> <laughs> we have the insurance, and okay. I believe it's good at least through the summer, so I, we don't need that. It would just be the dates and times and all that. Lori, we have you on facilities. <laughs> I could have just brought it downstairs to you. But I'm sure some signature needs to be on there. Um, let me know if you need a signature. Okay. Or I I think there is a signature. I'm sure there's spot. a signature. <laughs> <coughs> so. <laughs> yeah, let, let the board sign it. I know the gym is, you know, a must for a group this big. Um, what other needs does the summer rec program have before I tell you what's happening? I was going to ask what's happening. Um, so we use the, um, to be the, the kitchenette area. Yeah, um, we the always, staff room. Yes, so we always use that room. Of course, we know the gym, um, bathroom facilities. And we usually try to ask for a room 
whether it be a kindergarten room, um, any sort of classroom. I don't know if we still have the Zen down. Uh, any room, room yes, actually. Any that's room. Sounds, yeah, um, that's so we consider that to be a breakout room. Yeah. Um, so. In some years, it's been accommodated. In some years, it hasn't been right. accommodated. Right. Yeah. yeah. So last year it was not. Last year it was. Oh, wait. Two years ago it yeah. wasn't. Okay, we had like one of the classrooms we had. I don't know if it was Miss Nichols' room or the library, one of those rooms. It's what you remember as Mrs. Nichols' room. Right, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> I think of it as that too, so I always will. So here's, let me tell you what facilities wise we have happening this summer. Um, and we don't have everything set up yet because. We just had the vote on the budget, so we didn't know what we were going to be able to do or not. Um, this is the year that the gym floor is going to get all the wax removed, stripped, sanded, repainted, and then re-waxed. Awesome. Um, and from what Dick has said, it's needed it for a few years. And if you walk around, you can see you know, where the boards are starting to come up. And uh, he's done a nice job because he'll lay a thicker coat of wax over it each summer to protect it um, because it's cheaper than doing this but we budgeted for this this year and it's in the budget to do it. Um, he's already got calls out to see when uh, we can do it. I've encouraged him to try to push people off as late in the summer as possible but also we can't go too late. Can't be ready for school. Yeah, and it's a good week or more for the whole process to, from start to finish. And then you need time afterwards to let it sit. Um, so whenever that starts, essentially the gym is done for the summer. I'm just hoping that the people that are doing it don't come back and say our availability is July 1st. Take it or leave it. I'm hoping they're saying. So you say done for the rest areas. of the summer. It can't just be like off the table for two weeks. It needs. To, it's not like a typical. You're going in and coating it. It has. It's you know, a different type of wax. Yeah. You want it to settle so that it's not. I think not being destroyed by the time school starts because you're on it too soon. And it's my understanding that it has to be done early enough in August because staff has to be in there at the end of August. So it's not like you can do it mid-August and be ready in time for staff getting everything ready. Right. Right. You know, right. Because even staff can't be on. Right. Yeah, staff won't be able to walk through the gym right. to have that done. So, I don't have a date. I was hoping that we'd have that by now, but you know, we just started that process at the end of last week. Um, Is there a way to compensate for that when that happens with more classroom space? Well. Here's the other piece that he and I talked about. Um, you guys are done when? I think 16th. August 16th. So last year, the room that was um, used by the rec department was the old art room becoming a classroom for K-1. And we were hiring for that position. So we didn't have the teacher when I started. Um, and I think the rec had it up until the last week of their program. So they didn't have it the last week. So that was when he went in to clean and you know, get it all ready like he's done all the other rooms, which left on a brand new teacher 10 days to get ready for school. Which sounds like a lot of time, but it, it's it's just not. Especially in a school like Rollinsburg, where a lot of the furniture is personal furniture, 
so that new person gets in there and finds out what they have and what they don't have. You know, what's left from the teacher. Mostly not. <laughs> exactly. So it's it's not a matter of a new teacher coming into a room that's Mostly there. ready to go. Yeah. yeah, and they're just putting their touches on it and bringing in their materials. It's, oh my god, I have 14 kids and two tables. <laughs> Where is that other table from, you know? And talking to other staff and, you know, stuff being moved around. And so it's a little harder than just walking into a room that's mostly ready to go. So what exactly would be <coughs> So my thought was um, the kindergarten classroom is ideal because it has an outside entrance directly into that room. Um, it has a bathroom in the room. It's been used before by the rec program and been very successful from what I've been told by other people um, because people can go in and out easily without going throughout the whole building. And then if they need to use the gym, they in and out and the bathrooms are on that and then they're available also. So <coughs> that's the space that I would like to offer you folks to use. Um, it's bigger too. And it's bigger. So it does provide a little bit more space, you know, for kids to sort of spread out. Mm -hmm. yeah. And which when we did when Rec did use that, um, Dick, it may not even been Dick, it may have been Rick. Um, brought the refrigerator from the staff room down to kindergarten because they have ice pops and water and all that stuff that has to be cold. And then they just took it back at the end of when rec was over. Um, so they did not use so the teacher. So they didn't even use the staff room? No. It ju they took the refrigerator down there and maybe even the microwave. I don't know. But that was it. And they, so then they did not use the staff room at all that year. But I remember that refrigerator being moved down there, and I worked in that room one day. Before. I don't think that's a big deal. I, no, I don't think it was at all. Is, I, we could move it, or we could just leave the staff room as the staff room because it's right there. Well, I think, I think what the issue was is that why they moved it down there is because they sell these ice pops and everything so that they didn't have to have counselors in kindergarten, counselors outside, counselors in the gym, and counselors uh, in the teacher's room. It was more of consolidating their needs, too. But I, I, I That's something that I can work with the school yeah. director on. You know, typically in my past experience, you know, once you have someone hired, I can meet with them ahead of time and just, you know, say these are the available spaces and these are our expectations and you know, what do you need from us if they want that space and to keep that space? Mm -hmm. Yeah, nothing else happens in there. If they'd rather have everything down in kindergarten, that's, you know, 15 minutes and done. That's easy. I believe the year they moved the refrigerator was the abatement in the main building. So all the furniture from the main building was in half of the gym. So they only had a portion of the gym that rec could use. So that's why they wanted everything down in kindergarten. It's just a matter. So, so would that be the, um, the one area that we would have is the kindergarten room, or is there another along the hallway that would also be utilized or could be utilized? They had a smaller classroom last year, and honestly, every time I walked down that way, there were there were not many kids using that space. You know, the most I ever saw in there was. So that might work, except for perhaps when the gym floor is getting worked on and it's raining out. Yeah, that's what I was worried about. And some of our counts actually, even by the week, were fairly high. You know, I don't want to, it's going to be hot enough as it is. I've been having kids all stuffed in there. Understanding that I, the kindergarten room is a bigger room, um, just still having kids all together without giving them another main space. So. The year that I was there, and I don't know how Jeff feels about this because he wasn't there the year that I did rec, or two years that I did rec, um, rec used the hallway for kindergarten where their cubbies are. You know, that's where the kids put their stuff. 
but they also use that hallway that goes outside. And they would, because those doors close to close the right. rest of Valhalla. Yeah. But they, we play game, board games and stuff out there. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm just thinking that whole area because yeah. it's separate from the, the rest of that hallway. I mean, yeah. between the hallway, the kindergarten cubbies, and the large kindergarten classroom with the bathroom in there. The only thing that's closed off the, uh, the closet. The refrigerator and the microwaves down there is still a ton of space. Okay. That's, that's good. Yeah. If there's 80 kids, it's yeah. it's going to be cramped. The 80 kids in the gym is cramped too. Um, the gym is probably about the same amount of space as that whole area. Yeah, that's fine. I wasn't sure if I, I may have misunderstood. I thought maybe you were saying that we would only have a certain amount of space in that area. <laughs> oh, in the room itself. Yeah. Oh, no, no, okay. no, no, that whole area should be available. Perfect. So the piece is once the gym is closed and once we have to take that classroom to prepare for the teacher, <coughs> then there's, then you guys are probably still going to be going. So if we're August 6th, when does school start? Um, there's a, there's a week off after you're done and then teachers start. Can you start school after Labor Day this year? <laughs> <laughs> I follow the school calendar. Uh, lots of uh, state park passes. Well, you know, we had talks. Um, well, we we can talk about that. We'll just as something you don't need to be involved in a bit so, about what we do otherwise. The one thing that Dick and I have started talking about when researching is um, the possibility of doing an outdoor pavilion. Okay. Not like a ten by ten, but a pavilion that could be used for multiple purposes. Um, and is this a not like permanent enclosed, structure? A permanent or? structure on a cement slab um, up near where the baseball diamonds is. There's, there's a large grassy area up there. Um, large enough so that it, and open, not enclosed, right. but large enough so if the rain's coming this way a little bit, you know, you can still have tables in the center and be completely dry. Mm -hmm. um, so at least it would be if we can pull it off because he's had some savings in other projects this year. Um, so we're looking into prices and whether or not we could get somebody to come in and do the slab and put it up for us and whether the board would approve it. Um, that would help not only you folks, but then during the school year, you know, ice cream socials are out there. You know, Classrooms can go out there and do outdoor lessons, have a place to sit and write things, a place for families to go on the weekends and do birthday parties. <laughs> you don't need permission to use the playground at that time. So the more he talked about it, I, the idea is just coming in my head where it's, I mean, this is a great idea for multiple reasons. It would help you know, the town's folks and the school that would be awesome. I mean, when they can pull it off, this would be pretty so, awesome. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, before the <laughs> floor gets done, bam, there's a pavilion. Do you think with the picnic tables underneath it that they're provided by the school? That would be part of what we were thinking is if we can finance the actual structure this year, we've got tables like this that we would be willing to put out there this summer for the rec program and then budget it next year for maybe more permanent tables, heavier duty. But for the summer, letting you guys use these if this all works, that's easy. I think this is the type of table that they put in the classroom last year because they took everything out and they needed tables to sit at, so they put this type of table in the classroom. Unless the RTOs are still in there at that time, those are a little heavier. But they're still both tables. Right. <coughs> but we have 
So I won't know about that for a little while. We have a board meeting tomorrow night, and I'm telling you before them, and we're not bringing the presentation tomorrow night because we don't have a complete cost. Um, but we have another board meeting in a couple weeks. I'm hoping to be able to have all the information to bring to them. Is it a regular school board meeting in a couple of weeks, or is it? Yeah. yeah. Are they meeting like? Tomorrow's was close. supposed to be two weeks ago. Yeah. Oh, I see. Okay, and that's one's early. Yeah, the next was half Okay. Yeah. That's a regular but I was also thinking, Rich, and you know, we've we've had some people in the past who have volunteered for stuff like that, like we construction people, and um, you know, we I don't do know. have construction people in town. Yeah, some even with children. Yeah, who are in the school. That so, if you put the word out with your parents, you might get volunteer labor. Or I wouldn't even volunteer. It's so you know if you're if this is something would be good. right like if it's yeah. something because I know that cement slab is going to be the pricey that's that's pretty pricey but if, you know other things could be picked up by I don't know so everybody we, knows people it's yeah. a very small mm -hmm. town <laughs> the volunteer labor is touchy yeah. because if something happens and it falls down it was a group of volunteers that put it up. Yeah, yeah. 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 It's not like it used to no, be. No, you're right. You're totally the right. The folks get together on Saturday <laughs> and design the totally like barn. <laughs> yeah. But like our shed that's on the school grounds, the roof was redone, and that was all donated material yeah. labor. Yeah. And that was the other thing that Dick mentioned. He goes, it's going to be close enough to that shed that you know if they need they to store need. supplies right there, it's just pulling it out to the pavilion. And All right, so we'll count on that. <laughs> yeah, everything I say to Kelly is good, right? All right, so Rich is building a pavilion. All right. Mm -hmm. So I was trying to think of something to offer because I knew it was going to be one of those assumptions. Once the gym floor is redone, you know, that's, I mean, he'll only need a couple of days every summer to go in and surfaces so you know having you out a couple days earlier is different than whatever it could be this summer it just happens that this summer is you know, the summer where it's got to get done do you have any other major projects scheduled um, tiling the floors in the main building um, tomorrow Similar to the what's the annex? Yeah. yeah. <coughs> so that won't affect us at all. No, that won't affect you folks at all. Yeah. Um, on that and um, the north parking lot, if you're going up Locust Street and the buildings on the right, if you take the first entrance in, um, there's six parking spots there, and that's getting extended so that we'll have another six to eight parking spots, but that won't affect you either. That's like not part of the front lawn? No. No, no. that bus loop? No. Not on the bus loop? No. When you first go up, it's that first entrance. There's six spots. By the dumpster? Yeah, so it's yeah. the dumpster right. entrance. Yeah. Oh, that. Yeah. Oh, I see. Okay, okay. Yeah, so that right. won't affect Rick at all because every the kids are deposited on the bus loop. Yeah. So yeah. I don't think there's anything else that will affect it's just getting that classroom back yep. to clean in time for our new staff member. It sounds like there. it's all contingent on um, the bids that you have out there or the, the quotes you're writing on. Or, yep. Okay. Well, I'll just wait to hear from you and work it out from there. And last year, we gave Brittany the fog, the key. <coughs>
How old are kids? Do you know any PE people that you can send our way? It's up to I think six sixty a week for um, the director, the Raleigh director, and then um, it was something over five hundred for the assistant director and the team director. I don't remember what they were up. I didn't put that on. Never broken out. But the um, so the director's salary is going to be fifty. It's fifty four hundred. Oh, for the whole. That's for somebody looking for a summer job. It's not bad. No, not at all. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I'm working. You'd be cool. Yeah, I've done my time. <laughs> it's a fun job, too. It is. The right person. It right. really is. Right. And it's a neat job. You get your evenings off. And well, the team camp director is pretty good, too, because it's only three days a week. So that's. Oh, that's true. Yeah, Monday, Wednesday, Friday. So then I get some. They're also doing like all kinds of really cool field trips. Right. I have to say I'm a little bit jealous that, you know. I think that that would be a lot of fun, like. You can't take you somewhere? I thought I would like volunteer to like chaperone the ropes course maybe. I yeah, there know. you go. <laughs> something. If I think of something, I'll. Well, now it's on the town. Is, so is it on the town website now? Not um, Let me check. I don't know. <laughs> I was going to look before I came, and then I didn't. I have trouble to, finding it. Because that we need all those the that on the town yeah. website plus the application. Right right. right. The yeah. application should be on there already. It was, and then we took it down because they like application right. forms. Right. Yeah. Because um, we've had that on. on, on the yeah. I've not yeah. had an application form on the website. Okay. Like so, if you've had one, it's yours. And I don't know what that is. Application. Typically, I would tell people for any other town job that they're coming to the office to fill out a form here, or else they can submit a resume and cover letter. Okay. Rich, do you have anything you else? Because I know you need to leave. So, okay. yeah, do you have it electronically? Um, I'm almost positive I do. Does anybody else have anything? I would much prefer if you would email us. I can check the town website. It might be already on there. Then, um, Rich, Rich needs to go. We want to make sure. Does anybody else have any questions? <coughs> I don't. No. I don't. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. For sure. Lots more to talk about. Yeah, when I find out the information, I'll feed it to somebody. You feed it to Lori. Lori Lewis, yeah. our facility coordinator. Okay. <laughs> that is the title that I didn't give you. We're happy to give you that title. <laughs> I, more like voluntold, maybe. No, I was going to say, <laughs> volunteered. <laughs> yes. You're all volunteering. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Wish I could do more. And whatever, you know, I don't know how the rumor gets started, but it got back to me that you know, I didn't want people there. There were grumblings that, you know, I was against having the right department there. That's far from the truth. So if you've heard that rumor, it's not true at all. Any building, <coughs> you know, whatever we can do to you know, try to get more. I'm sorry, I can't imagine who would have said that. But sorry about that. No, that's fine. Thank you. It's good to hear, anyway. Yeah. Do that. I feel bad, but I'm saying. <coughs> well, you know, I, I think 
what's important is that you, you, you're not just saying it, but you're offering some solutions for us, which is extremely helpful. It shows us that you want to work with us. So oh, great. absolutely. And we appreciate your help, absolutely. All right. Thank you. Thank you. See you tomorrow. Yeah, I guess I'll go back. <laughs> <laughs> I have to, right? Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, you got another late night tomorrow. Yeah. So, this is a really good person. Yeah. Thank you. Have a good one. Good night. Uh, do we have a minister approved? Yeah. Okay, I came out. Did anyone have any questions? Um, yeah, did you send it? I thought these would be older. This? 1127. Was it 1127? 1127. That's my birthday. It was? We were meeting on your birthday, Lori. Well, I was in there. So. <laughs> and I am almost done with the meeting minutes from last time. I have the last five minutes to add in. Was that what? Did we meet? Was this down at the coffee shop? No, that was December, which we passed oh. last month. Oh, okay. Are these on the drive? The December ones are. This one is not yet. If you could put them in your drive folder when, when, you, when they're approved. After they're approved, right? Yeah. I'm sorry. I didn't see this. So oh, we earlier, can hold so. them, and then next time we can do both that one and the March 17th one, because they're almost done, too. All right. So we'll, uh, so we'll just table it. Table it. Well, we can catch up pretty quick, so I, I don't know how much to tell you about staffing. Okay. No, sir. <laughs> Uh, I don't know much either, except for the <laughs> fact that I did send um, the job listings over to UNH, um, and I have not received any feedback, but it was only almost two days ago. Did you get a thank you, we got them, we'll, we'll spread them around, or we'll post it, or make it a bit, like, did you get some kind of receipt? Like acknowledgement? Yeah. No. No, which is kind of weird, because this woman is helping me out, it's just been very kind about getting right back to me, so I wonder if maybe... Um, she's out or something. It could like be, that. but you might, you know, <laughs> give it another day or two and follow up with her and see yeah. if there's anything else you need to do or something because sometimes that's just an abyss. She's on. Um, well, I sent it directly to her. Okay. Yeah. She's because actually she is the woman who's at. Not only does she, um, she's the coordinator for the program, but she's also helping the students write the resumes. So she was like, get them to me as soon as you can. Awesome. And because I'm helping them write their resumes and they have some good candidates for you. Without, you know, before it goes to post, you know. And I said, okay. Excellent. Um, can we backtrack to staffing? I just had a thought in my head. Sure. Do we have um, emails for all our previous counselors and do we want to send them? Uh, Come back, please. Or yes, not? are you coming back? Um, if so, we need you to fill out an application. Do we have that information somewhere? So two things. One, yes, I think we do have a record of emails somewhere. I know, <laughs> I know they're, they're around somewhere. Yeah. I remember compiling staffing information, contact list sort of thing. I agree. Um, two, I want to be careful because there's been some who have come back for years in a row that I actually wonder if they should come back again. Do you know what I'm saying? You don't have to send it to everybody. Right. You can say it, you know, you can meet in a non-public session to talk about personnel and say, you know, let's send it to everybody, but maybe not this one because of whatever happened last year. Well, and if you're having any they have to fill out an application again anyway, right. right? So that's so, more right. of what I was thinking. Just if you're interested in returning, we need you to do this. It's like saying, here, we'd right. like you to come back, but really, well, you so not. again, I hear you. You're you right. Like, so you could handle it either or both ways. You can put out an, you know, an email to all of them and say, you know, there may or may not be spots, but we just wanted to let you know that camp's happening again, and we know that mm -hmm. you worked last year. But but just a disclosure, you know, spots may or not, you know, put your application to be evaluated with all the others, so that there's no, like, okay. guarantee feeling about it. But at the same time, I think it's certainly appropriate to meet and decide that you're not going to send that to one or two specific people for whatever reason. 
because we had a couple right. of recommendations from the previous director regarding like even some part time versus you know and how that worked. So, but I think it's very valid yeah. that you right. might we'll need to really talk about that. Yes. you right. don't want to hand tie yourselves by even people that you felt were really good last year. You don't have resumes from anybody new, so why would you want to guarantee that to them when you may get a whole new slate of really awesome right. applications, right. and then you're bound by whatever you said to the previous people. Right. But instead, mm -hmm. just invite people to invite the people you want to apply to apply without any guarantee. And, and you also have to think about there'll be a different director, and I'm, and I'm not yeah. saying anything about the other director, but just people different personalities, right? Different. You know, right. That Different leadership, mm -hmm. right? That's a good point. They may, you know, a director may come in and say, "I want to do right inter not intramurals, but like tournaments every day, and right. you know, this every day here, and that." So it would be a different interaction anyway. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. Well, I, I, to answer your question, I think it's a good idea. You know, see why we went. It's just being careful about mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right, mm -hmm. right. So you can. Have a non-public mm -hmm. to talk about specific people. Okay. Just make sure you're in non-public for that. Mm -hmm. So I'll leave that to you if you want to do that. So are we saying do we want to do that tonight, or do we want to maybe postpone that another week? Okay. You're the head of the staff. But you're department. finding the emails because I don't have that. So. Um, do we want to do that right right now? Or at the end of because well, you don't need to be here for that, correct? Or you do because you're you're the face of Denise. So I, I am currently the face of the board <laughs> here, yes. But um, you Or do we want to wait till next? I don't know, because we kinda wanna get we kinda wanna send that. It's out. about your timeline. Like, yes, right. We so need we have to tight timelines. Yes. So if you want so, to do that. Why don't you wait until the end of the meeting right. so that public presence is not, you know, out and in the leave. hall indefinitely <laughs> and then brought back in? Yeah, and that's perfectly fine. So, yeah, let's do that. Okay. Yeah. Good idea. Okay. All right. So, so, as far as I have um, the staffing, so. Okay. We've got registration, so everybody saw this. Yes, that's great. The summary registration. That's really good. Yeah, that's a few more than we had this time last year, so that's good. That's really awesome that you know about the comps from last year. Like, they can speak to where we were last year. Isn't that great? It is really great. I love great. data. I love <laughs> that you love data. You're, you're, you do a really good job in your spreadsheets and you're organized and your agenda. I love that. It. It's really great. I mean that sincerely. Yes. Did we... We, did we send home to every child? We did. We did. I don't remember. Yeah, every child got one. Well, I don't, well, I don't necessarily do the mail in my room, so I don't know. Yeah. Every child did. <coughs> I only asked because somebody in my room asked me today what I was doing, and I said I had a rec meeting. And they said, oh, I'm do, I want to do rec. Do we have to do that yet? Which, I mean, it's the kid, not the right. parent. Right. But it might be worthwhile to put another one, you know, mm -hmm. a week or so before the deadline. Yeah. He, he, also, he also asked me when, when you had to know why, and I couldn't remember. So, we also June 10th. June 10th. June 10th. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The other thing is, is that um, I need to take it over to Summersworth. So, to get it into the Summersworth schools, for taking it over to the SAU office, putting it out there, they could run it through RGS, too, with Summersworth. Elementary schools are all getting it at the same time. Then RGS can get it that time too. All right. So I know we talked about um, me doing the half page flyers, which I'm guilty of being a little slow on these days. But do you would, what what do you need from me in order to make that happen? Do you want do you want the half page flyers, or do you want me to run off a whole bunch of the full page? Um, it doesn't matter to okay. me what you want to do. It. What matters is the timeline, okay. and we want, and if we have it by mid-April, it shouldn't matter because then it'll go home by the end of, by, give the parents a couple weeks to sign up. I'm going to ask Rich if at some point he could do the phone blast. 
Oh. That's a great idea. What? I don't great know. Idea. That sounds you know, brilliant. Just a reminder that we're... The registrations are due next Wednesday or whatever it, really it is. Look like it ought to be like kind of the same. It's you know, great idea. And, yeah. Rock on. So what would be a good timeline for that, do you think? I would yeah, say sooner rather than later. Right, right, right. Or, or can you do it once a month until yeah, June, just, you just know? Remember, just remember. Right. Remember. Can we add it to the school newsletter that just came out? Oh, that's a good idea, too. I actually uh, read that. I did get a school newsletter. You, yes, you did. It's the rooster. The rooster. I don't did know what that, that is. But you didn't? No. I did. I read it the other day. Um, Which is why I knew. Talk to the was school town. Put your email address on there. there I didn't that. get it. Oh, we're meeting tomorrow. And then, like, April 11th, like I was like, oh, that's awful close. Yeah. <laughs> and he can quickly add you to the server. He did it for me at the beginning of the school year. So it may that's be, a good idea. Adding may, reminders. Is this a monthly thing? Yeah, and it might be going to your spouse. Like if your spouse gets emails from the school. That's what you doing. Right. Who knows? But I'll ask him how he feels about that and I'll let you know. Lori. <laughs> I'm just going to ask about the news letter and the phone blast. My suggestion for um, the phone blast after April vacation. Those people, yeah, I think that's when we, see, yeah. that's when you see numbers start to grow. Yeah. Is after, after April vacation? Oh, you know, somebody asked me, and it was not a kid, it was a staff member, if there was a cutoff. Like, do we only accept a certain number of kids? 125 for Camp Rolling. Okay. And you guys are 20? 20. 20. 20. So the good thing about sports and speaking of which is that they have a countdown on there. So if... As long as you're entering paper registrations in a timely manner. Yes. I want that more so far. But anyway, yes, it, it's a good point. But it is a countdown, so if that's um, helpful. there's five teen spots left, it will say on there. Oh, that's good. You've got five openings. It was very cute when the student asked me today for it. another student said, I know where they are. I will take you up a little bit because they were both walking yeah. so we will um, or pick up or whatever. And so she was going to show them on the list. Oh, yeah. And my kids asked me to come back and say, look, I haven't saw them because that's My question, though, is mm -hmm. are you the only one doing registrations? Do you and I need to meet separately so I can help you with the team camp? Oh. Yeah, you need to be added to Sports Engine too, by the way. Okay. You need to add your line. Um, I have a question. Yeah. Dee, I'm going to forward this to you. I just found my March edition of The Rooster. Okay. I have a child who is probably interested in, not a personal child, but a, mm -hmm. um, you know. A or something? No, a child whose family may be qualifying for assistance. And I'm wondering if you all are soliciting donations for scholarships. Is there scholarship money? Um, are you, is that even on your agenda, or are you just going to let that go? We're not there yet. Carol. I'm so sorry. <laughs> hey, we follow we're in the figure. registration area, so I thought yeah. that might be a good place. So sorry. the answer is, is yes. We, we have talked about that. And it's great that you're here, because then we can keep, catch you up to speed um, with conversations we've had with Denise as well. OK. So yes, the answer is yes. Usually just was it. Um, I know you have in the past. Yeah. I just didn't know if you were okay. And so, from what I know, we'll be getting one to two definite um, full scholarships. And one of our committee members sits on another group that always go to the scholarship. Yeah, that's so nice to have you. We can actually move <laughs> right on to that. We get to skip, skip programming because <laughs> not here. Yeah. And budget and finances, um, I, it was just important for me to let you guys know where we were as far as tuition and things yeah, we've collected. Fascinating that there are 15 non-residents and we uh, yeah. The number of non-residents were crazy. Yeah. 
There are more non-residents. There's like five of them before you can get one resident. I know. That's amazing. That's amazing. And I've had a lot of people ask me about it, too, that are non-residents. Well, I think the word is getting out. Mm -hmm. You know, people have enjoyed it, but yes, it's like the least expensive option around, and, mm -hmm. and you're going to get people for that. Because I saw the email that somebody had sent to you about, but my kids, I only need it three days a week. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And how you responded, but it's inexpensive, right. even if you're paying for the whole week. And, and speaking of which, Kelly had asked me a question last week. Um, if any registration questions come in, I do respond to them. I just don't reply all. So you guys oh, that's are probably wondering if I don't. No, no, no. I assume you do. Okay. So you can just assume mm -hmm. that I am because I'm looking at my email like every day. Yeah, that would be I didn't assume that, so I was like, did you did you answer that? Because yeah. I didn't answer it. <laughs> so if something comes in about donations or sponsorships <coughs> or so you and David or Kathy, yeah, I'm yeah. just assuming you guys are. Yeah, I don't need to follow up on you. Yeah, <laughs> nobody. And so, yeah, Dee said, so if a question about staffing comes in, I'm answering that. Yeah. Except there hasn't been a question. I don't answer <laughs> No, your facilities. You are answering something. You are facility coordinator. Okay, <laughs> so we can talk about sponsorship. So, Celia, I have, I'll have to tell Dick that's me. I hope I have for you. These are the letters I promised you. Okay. That you needed. I should have yeah. you last week. No word. Um, so I have you and David and Kathy on sponsorships donations. Is that correct? Yes. Yeah. Okay, so you guys are all working together. So, uh, no, we have not met to do anything because I've been quite busy with other stuff. Okay. But um, we need to get these out. Um, I have a list of places to go to and venues that we've talked to before. Um, and I, the suggestion had been that maybe we meet or I delegate to other people, like, here's a stack of envelopes and a list of yeah. places they need to go to, because we know some of them, some of the places, like Aroma Joe's, we have to send it to the Portland office. Right. Other places, like Dunkin' Donuts, we walk in and say, here you go. So, we need to work out who's doing what. Okay. Very good. Um, so here are some donations. If you need, um, if you need me to, to buy um, envelopes or stamps or whatever, just let me know. I can. I'll do that. Okay. On my own. You know, take it from the budget. And so um, scholarships. It's address scholarships, Caroline. So when we spoke with um, Denise. Um, we had left it where she wasn't really sure. We knew that there needed to be a, a process, so there definitely needs to be a process so things like that out the applications and well, who actually takes the applications and where the calls actually go. So we had left it where she was going to help to sort, of sort that out on her end. So we don't really have any definitive well, answers on this. Fair enough. And what we did last year was that she and I would evaluate them. Mm -hmm. um, so here's the here's the question. Now you say you you know somebody's you know, maybe somebody's already approached you. If we have if we have somebody send an email that says, "Do you have this available?" Um, should we forward that information just directly on to you or Denise to? answer and so I would say not Denise I would say okay. like um, do not assume Denise is reading email until we know that she is okay um, and in the meantime send things to me and I talk to Denise so yes I would say um, if if somebody is, is inquiring please send them along to me but I will also need to know from you all what the status is for how many scholarships you think you have? You know, I'll know as money comes in, assuming that the money says this is for scholarships. But you might have two more people who promised things, and it would be helpful to know that there are potentially two more paid slots coming or something. Um, Last year was our first year we got three, but previous to this we've gotten I know two, 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 
to so people two. that usually give scholarships year to year. And I have to reach out to the third one to see if they are going to donate this year. So there's, there's a high probability we're going to have maybe two. So Possibly three. Right. So we'll need to let you know exactly how many we have. And in the meantime, if any inquiries come in, they need to go to you. And then you'll have direct contact with them and or work that out. I will work that out with them. Yeah, I, I, will, I will work that out with them and ask okay. for documentation and, and all those things. And work with the board about, you know, we need, we really need some kind of criteria policy. We have something that we voted on as a recommendation. That would be helpful. Okay. If you could email it to me. Yeah. Celia, do you have that one? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So you have I have a quick question about fundraising if we're all done with scholarship stuff. We did a, a calendar in. Um, group with PTO last year. Is that something we want to try again or not try again? Or does anybody remember what we pulled in on that? That was six hundred and sixty dollars. Yeah. Next week, split. And we split it between the two camps. Mm -hmm. um, what I does PTO think? PTO is recommending at their meeting next Wednesday a subcommittee for this. Is there a reason why they're waiting till June? <laughs> <laughs> we haven't really done any of that, so it's a whole new board. Oh, okay. And we're expending more money than we're bringing in currently because yeah. we're finding out that there, there were a lot of things that weren't done previously, that they didn't have insurance, they didn't. Um, necessarily have the proper tax ID numbers and stuff like that. So the PTO board is trying to go through the process to make sure we're covered liability wise and And they couldn't do anything until like November? January is when we find no, 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 no. I mean because oh, yeah. um, the old board had been transferred the mm. checking and everything so right. there was there this So there was difficulties along the road. And because we didn't have insurance we couldn't do any events until January when we had finally got insurance because we weren't allowed to use the school unless we had insurance. And the events that we had put on had been more community-based, getting people into the school and having fun and getting together rather than fundraising. So um, we talked that timeline-wise, they have to go, we have to go before the PTO meeting next week. And then we have to get the calendar put together and then get it out to kids to sell and back, and to accomplish all that, they're looking at the month of June. So, oh boy, we raised thirty-eight hundred dollars last year in fundraising. That includes scholarships, huh? Did that include the grant? That's no grant. Um, it included C and J. Okay, we've yeah, not reached out to C and J yet either. Yeah, we need to. To get on CNJ. Like for in my mind, one of the first things we should be doing as far as donations and fundraising is concerned is CNJ. So anyway. yes, from what I've learned from doing all of this is that we need to know how much we're going to spend on teachers because we can't go to CNJ and ask them for fifteen hundred dollars right. and have three hundred dollars left over because that, that money is only used for teachers. For teachers. Mm -hmm. And it can be carried over year to year, but we can't necessarily spend the extra money on something else. So, so if we go to them, we're asking them a, maybe a portion for shirts and then the other portion would be towards maybe programming in some respect, right? Yeah, so we need to be specific on the yes. Right. Good point. Do we know how many Or, you know, you, you might, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you, but you might, you might make a list of things that need funding and just ask for a donation to REC and just see how they feel about donating to REC, which 
you know, in support of, yeah, and see, you know, it, if you have a conversation with them, they might prefer to have a specific something like t-shirts or programming, but they may also be willing to just sort of help support the program. So I think in the donation letter, Celia, this, you have it bucketed nicely, like what sort of programming um, and activities um, are possibilities to, to support. So I, even if maybe taking <coughs> that, it's, I think it's specific enough too, where you can actually take it to them and say, this is what we're thinking about. Yes, we still have your name on the t-shirts and we're very thankful if you want to donate to us more t-shirts, great. Um, yeah, because they might have a feeling about, they might really care more about programming than t-shirts or vice versa. And, and because they donated, it doesn't mean that they wouldn't still continue to have their name on t-shirts if you printed more. But, mm -hmm. you know, maybe they really want to get behind arts because that's what they feel passionate about or something. Or just general programming because they want to keep kids busy or field trips or, you know, yeah. whatever the thing is, they might have a feeling about it. Um, what my sense was last year, and I know Kelly and I touched on this briefly, one of our, our conversations is that they're looking for somewhat of a return on their investment into the camp. And like, do they want, they want to be advertised in some way? Well, they are in their t-shirt. Okay, yeah. so they are, and you can offer them that. But also, um, you and I, I don't know what happened with this, if you did this or not, but I remember last year you were thinking about a banner that you could put on the fence mm -hmm. that would have logos. Mm -hmm. And we did it for Newberry. I paid for one out of my pocket for Newberry Savings Bank for um, the stem in the summer. And I don't even know if it, the directors put it up there. You know what? What we could could do there there are programs online that you can actually go out and actually mock up a banner, and maybe we could present that to them and say this is what we're thinking in terms of I getting a, you know, some an ROI. I know that Allison has a program on her computer. It would be a paper banner, but it's still a banner. It's not like, hey, you should print the paper together and then have to go to the bar and mm. make it fit. So she might be interested. She loves using it. So she might be interested in just, you know, where you, at least you could set, this is what we're trying to do. I could do that. And I did look at a bunch of companies last year, like Staples. We could get a banner. We need to start now because it takes a week to get here. If it's going to be outdoor, the one I got last year was an indoor one. Look at Vistaprint too. Yeah. So we could actually mock one up on Vistaprint, like you're actually going to order it, and then you just cut and paste. And that goes towards the other thing is like, do we want monetary donations or like? donation of goods because like Cumberland Farms, we can fill out a form online and get donations of snack goods and or water and beverages, whatever. But they also look for how are we going to be recognized within your program. Do we right, which that? is why I think the banner can include like all of that and, and yes. it just speaks to everybody who donates. And just like you did the um, 15 camp the different locations of possibilities to do something like that. As much as you can get people to donate goods rather than money, you keep the whole experience out of your budget. So if you're going to buy snacks, you have to budget for snacks, and snacks come out of your budget. And, and it's, it simplifies things if they just donate snacks rather than... Or gift cards. Mm -hmm. yeah. Gift cards are... are <laughs> gift cards are money, you know? Gift cards are money. And, and honestly, like goods are money too. It's just that it, it becomes less consequential. But gift cards are money. So, so are we I wouldn't say don't ask for them or don't do it, but it doesn't really help what I'm talking about. Well, we had talked about, um, and this doesn't really have to do with this rack, but we had talked about a while ago um, for like winter rack, or no, it was the senior stuff, wasn't it, that we were talking about? Mm -hmm. And that the teachers union um, always makes a donation at the end of the year to like Wentworth House or the Policeman's Benevolent Association. 
Um, so I had suggested that I could ask them if they were willing to make a donation to senior, like money that would be go directly to seniors if we were doing something for them. Can they do that? Can we say, can they say what they want their money to go towards? Absolutely, anybody like can that. always say what they want their money to go towards. Um, careful. Um, right now, there is not a fund. So, so you have three hundred dollars budgeted for senior programming. Mm -hmm. If you receive a donation of three hundred dollars for senior programming, then that's just going to offset with, the, with what's in the budget, and that's all well and good and fine. If you get a donation for $1,000 for senior programming, you still only have a budget of $300 for senior programming. So you can't spend the rest of that $1,000 without going through the select board who has to find the money, the expense, budget money, mm -hmm. somewhere else, which may or may not happen. Additionally, if they donate $1,000 for senior programming and you spend only $300. We have to keep track of that $700. Well, it would be a thousand. It would probably be like a hundred. Well, yeah. well, whatever the thing is, though. I mean, that, that helps because it's easier to spend $50. But would it be better for them, them to, because Celia had talked about like a spaghetti dinner for seniors. So would it be better for, for the, the union to give a $50 gift card to Hannaford that could be used to purchase food for the dinner. What would be better is ask Hannaford to donate spaghetti and marinara sauce. <laughs> That's what would be better. <laughs> well, well, right. So, so like gift what cards are cash, essentially. So it doesn't help the budget issue that I'm talking about. You still have to keep track of that. I just don't know money. what to ask them to do. Is it better for them to just write a check? Well, it does department. the form not to the rec department. Everything I mean, is always to the town of Rollsford. But right. But um, I mean for the you have to honor the purpose, the intent in which money is donated. So if you have leftover money, you have to keep that intent. And so we're keeping track of a dollar ninety nine that's left over for senior programming, and that becomes mm -hmm. cumbersome. So keep that in mind. Would when it you, be better if we said like if we had any ideas within the next month of what you were planning on doing. So say you were having a, you knew you were having a spaghetti dinner, that they donate pasta and marinara sauce. If they wanted to go shopping and come and bring spaghetti and marinara sauce, that would be helpful because it completely frees up the $300 that you already That's have there to, you know, to buy decorations or do whatever other, you know, buy little, whatever else that you might want to do with $300 for that event or for a different senior <laughs> event. So receiving goods is it's always better, better than, okay. yeah. Um, can I ask a question about, this sorry event? to get off the, yeah. now that you brought them up, do we have to keep track of those? To get Absolutely. Okay. And yet, that's really annoying, what we just said. <laughs> I tried my best. I have a list for 2018 of the ones we received or they went to. So um, is that in the drive? I'm not sure, but I can put it in the drive. Please put it in the drive. That would so be it should be considered as an income? It is an income. Okay. It is money, and it is cash, and and yet it's it's so we not awesome. As, off, as we thought we were last year. Darn. There's that. But <laughs> it's... <laughs> It's not awesome because it gives you all essentially authority that you're spending town funds. You know, the gift card is donated to the town for this purpose, and now it's in the hands of volunteers, and I'm hoping you bring me a receipt, and then it's auditable, and are the purchases really meeting the intent of the donation, and it's just a lot cleaner if it's a cash donation, or like a check, you know, and then we receive a bill, or I'm re reimbursing an individual for like purchases they made because it just keeps everything above board. Gift cards become hard to keep track of because it's okay. almost like a separate okay. account. So if you have a $25 gift card from somewhere and you only spend $19.99, technically, 
Yeah. Right. And then you have to, then that's law as an expense. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so you need receipts too. Always, always, always. What about anonymous donations? <laughs> <laughs> like, I think that just happened with the spaghetti dinner tonight. Somebody donated 70 pounds of pasta. Awesome. Yeah. I guess that's good. Wow. Yeah. People who don't need recognition for what they do mm -hmm. are the yes. best people. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, having goods and items, and keep that in mind with like sporting equipment and stuff, there's a lot you know that could potentially get donated. It's much easier than keeping track of right. actual dollars and dollars. Well, that would be my other thought. If, you know, if they want to do that, would it just be better for them to do sporting equipment or games for rec than, than the senior? Thing? Well, don't accept money if you aren't really sure you're going to use it. Right. Because you know, otherwise we're carrying it over. And it's not to say that we can't, but it's just... Well, that's what I'm saying. Should I say... Just recreation you make generally. A donation of games, board games, because I bet there are no board games left from Rec 9 million years ago. For... Yeah. Some donations when we up rack, started up to... Or, you know, you know, like balls or whatever. Yeah, yeah. But that they donate a thing rather than say, here's $50, go buy sporting equipment. Yes. 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 I will let them know that. <laughs> and then you all can think about where you want me to ask them to donate money to, well, to donate things to, whether it's sports stuff or what. Ping pong table. Yeah, that's what you do. <laughs> well, you know, but games can also Who's apply ball? to seniors. Like, yeah, you could have, like, a Mahjong tournament yeah. or, like, a Scrabble tournament or, you know, things like that that seniors might participate in. And there are a lot of requests for senior um, youth matchups. Oh, so, interesting. That is interesting. Yeah. So, like, here is a bunch of things that we're willing to accept for goods. <laughs> <laughs> so can we revisit the calendar? So Oh, sorry. We yeah, totally let's go topic. back to the calendar for a second. So PTO, would they be willing to share that with REC again? And how are you going to do that with school being like two weeks in June? Is that kind of the calendar would be a two week, or would you just fill up the calendar for all of June and do the pickings before school ends? No. So the plan. Well, this is not gone before the whole okay. PTO, so it's still a work in progress. Okay. It's not anything yet. Um, the suggestion is that we fill the whole calendar for the month of June. Yep. And that we have the kids pull. And it's announced. We also have a new Facebook page, RGSPTO. Um, and the hope is that we would um, continue to pull throughout the school year, or throughout the month of June. The administrative staff will still be working, and that we could every day, whoever runs the RGSPTO website, Facebook page, would post it on their page. We would contact that person. You can pick it up at the school office. We can mail it to you. If these our, our accommodations don't work, like so. can can I give you a suggestion for that? I have seen people who have run calendars who actually do all the pickings in like one week, and they tell you the whole mm -hmm. month of winners. <coughs> so the other thing is, is you have to check with when they're going to be there, because yes, they are there in the summer, but. They also are not there in the summer, so it's a so I would I would say so. just to if, if we're gonna if if you're gonna include us if you're gonna do it in June, that you can fill the whole calendar and just pick all the prizes before school ends and announce it and hand them out and I think that's be done with baseball. Don't baseball does that? Yeah, I think they and I think they told us within the first week of the month. I don't remember. I bought a calendar through somebody and they they posted. 
they posted all the winners like the first day of the month. <laughs> so when, that, when is the PTA going to start selling calendars? Do you, do you know yet? Uh, that we have, we're in the process of going before the whole PTO board or committee and discussing that. But that doesn't happen until next week. Okay. And that we can't do anything until after that because they don't have a letter, they don't have their tax ID number all set up yet. So before they can do donations, they have to get a couple things lined up. Well, just, I mean, we didn't do a whole lot for that last year, but I think we're willing to do whatever, you know? So, I mean, it was kind of, we'll take care of, you know, the PTO last year was like, we'll take care of it and don't worry, you know, yeah, we're willing. You. So, um, yeah, so whatever, you know, we, we want to be a part of that if you need us. I mean, so, um, frankly, it's just us, but. <laughs> <laughs> But, you know, soliciting, you know, uh, um, gift cards and things like that, you know, we can certainly all help with that. Yeah, and that's what I was going to say is that we did get a list going of different places that are local that they would like to um, see included and different things. Um, is there a denomination? Like, what is no, there was no denomination because we were just talking about some of the things and some of the things that I've learned from the past, like VIP over in Somersworth next to Walmart won't give out a donation of money. They only give out a donation of gift cards. So that's a good place to go get a gift card. And like some of these other local places, we were talking about places that we know where people work, that we have contacts that we would want to be in. Um, go to places that people in this area enjoy, restaurants, baseball games, hockey games. Can I, um, can I, I tell you a couple things? This, this just came out for lacrosse. Um, the first, the first winning is four one pound, lo one and a half pound lo lobsters. Hold on. It's from Seafood Lock. $25 gift card to Cafe Espresso. $30 gift card to Cinco de Mayo. Gift card, lunch for two. I don't know who's doing that. York Wild Kingdom, they four at VIP tickets. Um, the Lynx Outlook, nine holes of golf. $50 gift card to Maine Pet Supply. $50 gift card to the Green Elephant. Um, two dinners at Bob's Clam Hut. Hilltop Fun Center gift basket. Um, Portland Sea Dogs, four ticket vouchers. Um, Pretty good. Yeah, so Bob's Clam Hut, actually, they just did a, there's two, two dinner, uh, so there's another one, two dinners, Bob's Clam Hut. Um, Weather Vane, dinner for two. Um, Sunday brunch for two at York Harbor Inn. I don't know hey, who did all these things. Who did this? <laughs> this is Marshwood Lacrosse. Oh. Yeah. So I'm supposed to be selling these, if anybody wants one. Um, <laughs> $50 gift card to Martin Gal Wharf, you know. Um, How much are they selling this for? Ten bucks for one of these. Wow. Um, <coughs> there's two links, nine holes of golf. There's two of those. Hey, there's a C and J, two ticket vouchers. Oh wow. Um, Children's Museum, four passes. Um, Wentworth Greenhouses, twenty five dollar gift card. How many people did they have to put that together? I don't yeah. know because that's, that's a lot that's of an army. That, that was an <laughs> army that did that. Like, nine round thirty minute kick. Boxing gym, 30-day membership. Awesome. One month family pass to the works. $150 value. Oh my gosh. So, yeah. So some ideas. <laughs> you should work now. Is that in an email or what is that? You should send it to me. Yeah, I'll. Um, These are ideas because if, if, if they're giving away that what? sort of thing, we should be thinking about what level being brave of stuff. Enough to ask them as well, I think. The power of asking, yes. so often that's all it takes. My it's sister does a, um, she's got a nonprofit, and she lives in Keene, and she does some, she gets some amazing things, even in this area, like she'd have me go over to Lint and get her fundraising donation, and it usually is this huge. Lint is thing. very generous, and they will give away lots of stuff for the asking. Lint is great. Yeah. 
They do some really good things. If I went over and asked them just for a personal supply, then I get that. <laughs> <laughs> Usually when she asks me to go get the stuff, I open up the boxes and <laughs> can I have a couple? <laughs> they, they're really generous, like the big, big like candy bars. And, yeah. Yeah. I'm going to have to put, so that was on um, the, the cross like president's Facebook page, which I, which, so she didn't allow, she didn't, because I was going to share that on my page, but because um, I'm technically supposed to sell a few. So I'll. Um, I do know that we did talk about families that have multiple children in school mm -hmm. and like what the requirement is for a child. Do we request that they each sell X amount and how difficult it must be? Family should be for a family. Yeah. That if you have five kids or three kids, you can't sell some. And then the kids are competing against each other for the same aunt and uncle, and you know. And so the other thing that was suggested by the PTO members was to do it through their Facebook page to reach a larger group, so it's not just limited to the parents and stuff. Mm -hmm. Is that? If they put it out on a post, then parents can share it to families that are far away. You could purchase through the Facebook page, and then we can just, because um, now through Facebook, you can use credit cards, I guess. And so they have them. You guys should get a Venmo account. I'm all about Venmo. <laughs> I would never use Venmo. You, you should? It's no. fantastic. I disagree. <laughs> I disagree. There was. Um, there's a series, I don't know if you've seen it, called The Black Mirror. And it, so there's an episode mm -hmm. about how people are interacting with, like, like visually seeing ratings of all the people around them. And, and how they interact with people, like whether or not you can get an apartment is based on your rating for how your interaction was at the you know, rental car dealership and when you bought your sandwich for lunch. And all these people with every interaction in all your life, you know, after every interaction, people are like going on their phone and ranking you. And that is creepy. That's the beginning of it. That's the beginning of it. How was your experience in dealing with people? You have to, you know, I get it with like, um, with, it, it's not any different than like Airbnb and, you know, Lyft and Uber. You have to create some kind of trust with strangers that you're having a transaction with in order for those kinds of ventures to work. But at what point are you but Venmo making like, general? It's attached to your, like it's just about money. It's just about zipping money. Yeah, but you're ranking people. I mean, there's feedback, right? Like it's attached no, to social no. media. So how much are they, even if it's not, even if you don't know about Lori's Facebook account when you're sending her money or vice versa, yeah. tell me that Venmo doesn't and they're not making connections about, you know, how many friends she has and whether or not she was quick at paying you. You know what I'm saying? Like, they're, I'm oh, sorry, my I just, brother is watching you. I find that creepy. That's, just, that's, that's me. All right, well. PayPal. It's the same thing. It's the same company. Right. But it's not the same thing because it's not attached to social media. I don't know if it's attached. It's attached to your Venmo. If you're a Venmo, then you can see it. But if you're not Venmo, you can't. <laughs> so it's <laughs> anyway. Anyway. Wait, anyway is well, there thank you for indulging me in the weeds there. <laughs> is there anything else that we need to talk about about scholarships and donations? and yeah, fundraising that we need to get out. Yeah. So grants I have not done much on because I've been swamped with personal items. But at the last meeting, this is what we discussed, that um, we were going to apply to Dick's for sporting equipment like soccer goals, hockey, ping pong table, foosball tables, right? And we still want to move forward with that. And then the other grants we were looking into getting a wildlife show here there's three or four companies that do wildlife shows in the companies. Um, the Chris um, Papalos, the trick bike yeah. guy, motivational speaker that we've tried to get a couple times. Um, and we're going to write them for art workshops that would include doodle bugs, paint for fun, or bringing in artists yeah, from the mills. There's a dance teacher and stuff. The kids would more like to see the trick bikes. <laughs> 
so those were the like three or four top priorities that we're going to be writing the grant for, and hopefully they'll be general enough that we can bring them back. Did you get any type of response from the um, REF as I don't think just met yet. Okay. Well, they were supposed to have met in the meantime when we were, what we had to backtrack the process. Okay. If that makes sense. Yep. I don't think they met recently. Okay. So, I don't think so either. So I have not heard back from them, but it was just a couple days ago that I sent it off. Right, right. I just didn't know if you might by chance. And, and I didn't know if I should have sent it on to the rest of the committee members, but that was the only email address I had was the president's email address. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, she'll this person as she is. And I did say I'm not sure if we'll make it. So, um, we will qualify for anything. But I also did do some digging. You could not find anywhere their uh, mission statement because we spent time talking at the last meeting about making sure that we look at the mission statements of the organizations we're applying to and craft our grant. To Are you talking about them. Philbrooks? No, uh, REF. Oh, REF. Yeah. They don't necessarily publish it, and that's troubling. Or, or um, yeah, I, they don't. Difficult. They don't have like a website or a place where you can go to gather information about them. I believe it's basically through the members. Is it on the school? It might be, but I so I couldn't find anything when I searched it. For whatever it's worth, and I'm not sure how searchable this idea is, it's all filed with the attorney general's office. But I don't know how readily they can find that for you. Yeah. So I was trying to make it fit down. So. Well, it's my understanding the play was very successful money-wise. So. Well, that's good. It's good to know. <laughs> and so we had asked for $800 for a magician and arch. And the reason, so we still need to, do we still want to put money for the movie? That's the question. Then maybe that's it. You can do that potentially at the last minute. Like keep your eye on um, your budget. And if you think you can find the budget money. Yeah. The other thing is you might, like, you have $300 for senior programming. And I know you're thinking about a spaghetti dinner. But you can also like make lots of popcorns and invite seniors to some kind of movie night. Oh, like an old book or something? Yeah. Yes. Like, uh, or like Dragon the Stacy and the Green Book. Like, right, something like please. that. I mean, yeah, but you can think about using, you know, you can try to project how, you know, how basketball is doing and if there's money there and talk to the board about that before you just try to move money around because they would want to be involved in that, but that's a potential. But you might just know that you're not going to spend all of your budget in one way or another, potentially, maybe. Maybe not, because you guys are really tight, I know, but it's, it's something to think about. Yeah. All right, anything else that we want to share before we uh, Go to non-public? No, the only thing was just send the meeting. Um, so that was it. Was it what we can do that now or after this time? Um, okay. 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 Because it was very hard to be on your phone and making an appointment and looking at the calendar at the same time. Mm -hmm. I put people on speakerphone so that I could be looking at my calendar. But I can't do that. Sometimes. Well, it depending. Yeah, I get that. Yeah. So if we meet in three weeks, it's actually vacation week. So I will be here, and I will probably maybe. Can we go before vacation? That would be two weeks from today. And maybe make it a quick one. We could talk about where we are registration eventually. We do grants that go to the fourth board on the 15th. 
and I don't know, maybe by then we'll, we'll have staff and ready to go. Um, I don't know if that works for you. What day? You said before vacation, right? So before vacation would be the week of the 8th. Um, so I can, looks like any. Oh no, I can't on the 11th. It's a Thursday. Yeah. So any other day. I'm okay. good. Kathy can't do Wednesday to Thursday. So Tuesday the 9th is. Um, I can't do it until after 7 that night because it goes. And Mondays we can't do Tuesdays. So we can just forward stuff to Kathy. I will have to leave on the 10th by. Seven, probably. I volunteered <laughs> to teach an adult learn to swim class. Oh, so, neat. Yes. So I'm doing that every Wednesday in April. Everybody here know how to swim? Know how to swim, David? No. Do you want to come join our class? <laughs> <laughs> All right. So uh, we. So, so I'm looking at no day that so week. So if we. <laughs> Well, if you don't care if I leave by Theoretically, seven. it's a quick meeting anyway. Right. So if we say six to seven. Is it ever really? <laughs> six to seven? On um, the 10th? Yeah. That's good. Um, um, the 10th. Um, You're out of yeah, I am. It's okay. Um, <laughs> do you want to go the? Are you guys going away on April vacation? I'm not with that anymore. What about you? I might be. I haven't decided if I'm throwing my children into a van and driving somewhere. Okay. Kind of no, I was actually thinking the same thing. A little road trip, I think. Because I could be here that Tuesday night. Yeah, I wouldn't be back either Tuesday or Wednesday. I probably wouldn't affect till Thursday if I go. Um, so I see I'm going out of town Thursday. Yeah. Okay. So on the 10th, I mean, this is 6 to 7. Do you want to be 5 to 8? Whatever you want to do on the 10th is fine. I, I'm, I'm, I'll figure it out. Okay, can we have a 5.30? Sure. Okay. So that's 5.30. Let's do that just in case. Let's do that. I could be done by 7. So. Yeah. Okay. I'll wear my bed. Just suit. in case something else comes up you need to talk about, right? <laughs> and again, the water. Yes, apparently I do. I don't know. I guess. But also, since David's now on the committee, even if you have to leave, we will still have a quorum. I don't know. Mm -hmm. good. Oh, what day is that? Is that a Wednesday? Yes. yes. So Kathy, Kathy won't be here. here. Right. That's a bummer. We'll have to have her give you her report. Okay. So I have a question about committee members, Kelly. You said that the select board added David at one of the last meetings that they had. And you are the rest of you are all on an annual appointment, which has not been renewed. Not that it won't be renewed, but um, also the ex officio hasn't been selected. Which you know, there's no reason to think that that wouldn't continue to be Denise. But because that's been her committee, the board just doesn't want to do anything else except to enable David since he showed interest. So um, if you have other people that you think that would be interested in joining, by all means, let me know or have them email me. Um, I don't mean to cast any doubt on, on the future of the group. It's just, it, it's just more of a formality and a consideration for Denise. Um, but I was going to say, the two alternates that are listed in the book Resigned in the last year. Yes. Just wanted to make that verification that they do not need to be reassigned. Re um. Correct. I, I have removed them okay. since they resigned. Um, not to say that you necessarily have to have alternates or that many alternates or couldn't have more. I don't think there's anything that really dictates, except for you know workability. 
you know, at some point a group gets too big to be really effective. But there hasn't, there's no rule like there is with other groups like the Planning Board and the Conservation Commission are more, you know, regulated. And so there's no reason that this group has to be anything like that. But yes, they have been removed. Just wanted to clarify that because I didn't know they were in the book that came out at the beginning of the month or whatever. The town report, yes. Because that was based on last year, right? Yes. Okay. Yes. All right. Yes. We're in non public, yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, you have to do a roll call book. Yeah.